Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to use multi outputs to improve the sound of your mix. So here's the original string quartet that I'm working on. So that's just the first less than a minute of where I'm at in the string quartet, but I thought it'd be an interesting place to show you how to use multi output. So here we go. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new track, new software instrument, and then rather than selecting stereo, we're gonna select multi output. And this allows us to really control the routing of where the sounds and the microphones go in the DAW. So create that new track. Let's load in the cello leader. We're just gonna use cello for this example. So load that in. And now if we go to the mic menu, we can see that we've now got this new menu here where we can select which stereo channel the microphones go to. So this means that we'll be able to have really, really good control over which sound goes where, and this is fantastic. We'll come back to this in a second. Let's go into the mixer. Let's label this first of all as uh, cello multi. Now you'll see that we've got this plus and minus sign down here. And this allows us to create new tracks which are associated with this virtual instrument. I'm going to use a total of four um, microphones today, the close, tree, outrigger and ambient. So we need to create three new tracks because we can use this original track as part of it. So one, two, three, and you'll see that we've created new tracks. And now stereo channel two or mono three and four is coming through aux two. Uh, channel 3 or mono 5 and 6 is coming through uh, this aux here. Stereo 4 is coming through mono 7 and 8 on these different channels. So we can already see that we already have a lot of control here. I'm going to rename these so that um, we don't get too confused later on. So uh, we're going to call this one close. Let's try and type it properly here. Close, tree, outrigger and ambient. So now we can, uh, we can see where things are going. And now what we're going to do is come back to the um, the instrument menu. We're going to turn off mix one. We don't need mix one anymore. And we're going to turn on all of these microphones that we're going to use and we're going to turn them up full because we don't want to mix it at this stage. That's for later on. We just want to give maximum signal to the DAW and then it can do its thing later on. So stereo one is absolutely fine for the close mic to go to. We still want it to be heard through this channel. That's great. And then the tree mic, we're going to send down stereo two, which is this channel here. The outrigger mic, we're going to send to stereo three, which is this channel here. And then the ambient mic, we're going to send to stereo four. So now each microphone will only be heard within one channel. And this now means that we can ma manipulate the sound of each microphone in a much more controlled way. So now that we've done this, what we're going to do is we're going to select each of the new tracks right click on them and select create track. So now you'll see we've got these new tracks being created up here. So the next thing we want to do is bust these together. So the cello is still heard kind of as one instrument as it were. So we want to select the four tracks that are associated with this cello, right click, create track stack. Then we want to create a summing stack, create that. And now you'll see that all of these microphones are being rooted into bus one, which we're going to rename as violoncello and let's just call it multi so it looks a bit different from the other one. So now that's the basics of setting up your multi uh, mic outputs. So now you've got complete control over the sounds that you want. So if I just drag the MIDI in here, really uh, useful thing is that you can put the MIDI anywhere you want on these uh, four channels and it'll still come across. Just remember that you need to set the articulation set of the new channel um, which has the MIDI on it. So you go strings, and then we've got cello leader, and this means that all the articulations from the original um, 
place will, will work. So now we can actually muck around with the sound. So I'm going to start with actually just the close mic and let's just see what that sounds like on its own. Really close, intimate mic sound. Sounds really, really like the cello's playing right here, which is which is a really useful sound to use. Um, so now here's the next one. This is the tree mic. And this is the most realistic microphone, I suppose, or the, kind of the most useful one. If you only had to use one microphone, use the tree mic. So let's go to the next one, Outrigger on its own. Again, a really uh, useful sound that you can use for adding a sense of space. It would help if I turn these other channels off. That's the Outrigger mic, and then here's the ambient mic on its own. Which again puts it in a really interesting space. So now we've got so much control over the sound and we can be really careful and controlled about the EQ, for example, that we put on each of these. So what I'll often do is I'll put an EQ, for example, onto the close mic. And this EQ will only affect the sound that comes out of the close mic. And uh, what I'll often do, roll off quite a bit of bass. The, less, the more bass that we roll off, the better. And then often I'll get rid of some of the harsher frequencies. I hope you can hear that. It's got the real grit, which you might want in the mix, but normally you just want the warmth. But this already means that we've got more control over the sound. You can do this for every single microphone, and I would do it for every single instrument as well. So this is what I would do um, when I'm kind of fin finalising the piece and I bounce things down. Um, and then I would mix it in this way. They can get a little bit RAM intensive. Um, sometimes, uh, particularly if you're using a big orchestral piece, you might have seen one that I did recently, which had like 30 gigs of RAM because every instrument had four microphones on it. But in this kind of setting, I'm sure most computers have sort of at least eight gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM if you're on a Mac probably, um, should be easily, easily achievable um, if you're writing um, for a smaller ensemble and it gives you so much more control of the sound. So that's multi-outputs. Extremely useful tool when it comes to the mixing stage. Thanks so much for tuning in uh, again to this vlog. Let me know in the comments if this was at all useful or um, if there's anything else you want me to cover over the next couple of weeks. Uh, really happy to hear from you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and see you next time.